Hello and welcome to The Insider, a show designed to clue you into the biggest news, events and announcements inside the video games industry. Discussing with you some things you may know, some things you may not, and the glue that holds it all together is a little bit of my own opinion. My name is Paul James, thank you very much for watching, and let's get for the episode. Let's be not clad! So for several years, Microsoft have been on the receiving end of a lot of criticism related to the lack of first party releases available on the Xbox One platform. There's been a few, we've seen some Halos, we've seen Gears 4, we've seen plenty of Forzas, but we've not seen much else. And some of those that have released have been commercial and critical flops. Well, in 2018, Microsoft has been seeking to turn things around. They've made some significant acquisitions in the last six months that have been publicly announced. And it seems like there's a sixth one on the way. And we're going to talk about those past ones and this new one and what it all could mean in this week's episode of The Insider. The highly anticipated sequel to the 2003 game of the year, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. Winter 2004. So at E3 2018, Microsoft announced several studios that were joining the fold. The first one was a new studio called The Initiative, and they are going to be working on what Microsoft are referring to as a quadruple A title. Four A's. We like a lot of hyperbole there, but we don't know what the game is. It's going to be based in Sony in Santa Monica, where we've got a lot of studios working on big action-centric third-person action games, the God of Wars and those sort of things. It's being helmed by someone who was responsible for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, so from Crystal Dynamics, there. There's some pedigree at that studio already. They haven't announced their first game yet, but you can expect it to be big. They also picked up uh, the Hellblade developer Ninja Theory. They picked up Compulsion Games, who have most recently developed We Happy Few. They picked up Playground Games, who had done a whole bunch of uh, Forza Horizon games for them already, and are working on a, an open world RPG of some sort. We don't know what that is. A lot of speculation suggests it might be a Fable game, but they've now officially joined the fold and Undead Labs, who had been responsible for State of Decay, and most recently State of Decay 2. They'd already been developing games exclusively for the Xbox slash PC, and now it's official. Now they're part of the family. Well, most recently, as of this week, it's been reported by Kotaku, Jason Schreier, who does, does some incredible work there, that Obsidian Games are going to be joining the fold as well. And Obsidian are not a small name. They've worked on Fallout New Vegas, they've done South Park The Stick of Truth, uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2, Alpha Protocol, uh, most recently Pillars of Eternity and Pillars of Eternity 2. They've got a great pedigree and the one criticism of their games over the journey has been that they've been a little bit buggy or there's been little little quirks along the way and a lot of that's been attributed to not having the finances to give the time, love, care that the games really deserved. Well now that they're working under the Microsoft umbrella and they'll have an essentially infinite amount of cash up their sleeves that bodes really well for um, Obsidian going forward. Let's see what their next product can be, will be, and let's see what it does for that Xbox platform. My realm is the gaping maw of entropy. The hunger that cannot be sated. So over many years, Microsoft and the Xbox platform has been rightly criticized for being very one dimensional. We've had a lot of shooters, Halo, Gears, they've uh, really put Call of Duty up on a pedestal, that's now a PlayStation thing these days, but they've, it's, it's been all about shooters and lots of big boombastic action, um, really in your face, lots of noise and craziness, and there's, they've been criticised for not having any other tone. Microsoft have tried other games along the way, we've seen Alan Wake and Quantum Break and um, Viva Piñata and several other games along the way, but none of them have really struck a chord. And on the, on the other side, PlayStation have been doing exactly that. They've been giving us lots of different games from lots of different sort of perspectives and approaches and storytelling approaches and have been really deservedly praised for that work. Well, it seems like Microsoft is keen to get into the action because all those developers they've picked up have really specialised in lots of different things. Compulsion kind of do some really crazy, weird, off-the-wall off the sort of things that could be different any, who knows what the hell the next game could be. If We Happy Few tells us anything, it's going to be a really weird, quirky sort of game. Ninja Theory gives Microsoft their, their, their God of War, essentially, that sort of experience, that third-person action um, experience that we've not had exclusive on that platform basically ever. Playground, supposedly working on an RPG. Again, could be Fable. We'll have to wait and see what that is. Uh, we're probably going to get more State of Decay from Undead Labs. 
But the thing that we're kind of seeing here, and this this includes the potential for Obsidian joining the fold, is we're going we're starting to see a multifaceted sort of approach from the Xbox platform. We're getting differentiated products. We're not getting the same thing in a different skin over and over. And that bodes really well for the platform going forward. And we're going to talk about how that links in with some other decisions, other bigger picture decisions being made by Microsoft next. <laughs> The only thing I can say for sure, Mike, this business will change you. What you do now, huh? Kill me? That not get your missiles back. This console generation, as far as Microsoft winning, whatever that even means these days, but certainly selling the most systems, it's over. They can't win. PlayStation's out on top. The Switch is surging at the moment and could very well overtake the sales that the Xbox One has already made. Um, but what Microsoft is doing is setting some pieces in place that will give them an awesome head start, hopefully for them, beginning next generation. They're getting the studios down pat. They're getting the games organized, which is what so many people rightly criticized Xbox for throughout this generation. We've just not seen many exclusives. We've not seen many high quality exclusives. And that might be about to change at last. Then you've got to look at the uh, this xCloud concept that got announced this week. So we're talking about cloud gaming, streaming. They've got, they've got an initiative that they're working on here, and that could be um, really big next generation. You've got XO18, so there's fan events that they're starting to bring back. They're really trying to engender that support and get people on board. You've got Game Pass, which is doing incredible things there. It's, how it works financially is totally beyond me because I just picked up Forza Horizon 4 myself for nothing outside of my Game Pass subscription recently. I don't know how that's profitable, profitable, but I'm sure it is somehow. And of course, backwards compatibility. Microsoft is making a lot of consumer friendly decisions at the moment that I assume are still profitable and are going to bode really well when the next generation Xbox, apparently Project Scarlet or whatever that, that ultimately ends up being called, um, when that releases, you would hope that they've got all these initiatives in place, they continue them, maybe they improve them even further, and it's gonna bode really well for the next generation. And so that concludes another episode of The Insider. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. All those buttons are down below here. And hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted to every new video the moment it goes live on the channel. That includes Patched, The Insider, Player 2 Plays, The Late Game Review, Gamer School, The Video Games Club, and a whole lot more. There is some awesome content there, so please be sure to go and check it out. For written content, please visit the website player2.net.au where you'll find reviews, previews, opinion pieces, news, features, the Player 2 Writer's Draft, and a whole lot more, all contributed by some of the best games writers in Australia. So go and check out their work. We're also on Patreon, patreon.com slash player2au, and consider kicking in a few dollars. At the lower tiers, you'll get early access to episodes of this, of Patched, and several more shows. At the higher tiers, you'll get monthly exclusive episodes and the ability to join us in the monthly Player 2 podcast. Consider checking it out. We'd love to hear your voice on the show. Thank you in advance. And for rolling updates, you can find me at PaulJamesP2 on Twitter. The website, you'll find at player2au on Twitter. And until next time, that is the... The future of Xbox in some ways discussed, but specifically what's going on with the Obsidian. We'll see you next time.